All right. Hello. Greetings and salutations. And welcome to our Shop Talk, episode 20. Yeah. Uh, we are J&J. Jared. John. John. Yeah. Jared. You're confused yet? Um, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking bourbon, Kentucky Straight bourbon from, it's just a Trader Joe's house brand. It's good though. Um, what the? Bourbon's a little sweet for me, so I have to go real slow. I, you know, I'm not a huge bourbon fan, must admit. It's yeah. a little too sweet for me. Yeah. But, yeah, but I tried that one. It was pretty good. Bourbon, you know what would be good? Bourbon. Yeah. Is if they made, instead of using lots of sugar, uh huh, they used hops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm drinking yeah. 805 by Firestone Walker Brewery um, outside, out in uh, Paso Robles. Mm-hmm. In the Central Coast, California. Even though I'm drinking it, I will say it is highly overrated. I actually avoid it now. Yeah, same um, here. Uh, it just happened to be in the fridge, yeah. so that's the only reason I'm drinking it. But it's a lager. The, the thing that I or find is it an ale? It's it doesn't. Matter. It says it's an ale, but it's barely an ale. Well, and to be fair, because of our geography, we get spoiled. There's so much available around here. True. And a lot of places nowadays, but anyways. We are smoking Gaywith and Hogarth um, Brown Irish Twist, the rope stuff. It is... It's a cigar. Yeah, it totally tastes like a cigar. Uh, it's a little sweeter, I think. A little bit. No. But it's like a nice medium, medium to blonde cigar. Yeah. So if you're a cigar smoker and you only smoke a pipe on occasion, but you really like the flavor of cigars... Uh, this you should try this. It's very good. It's hot, very strong flavor, very high in nicotine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, Which is why I might be a little sleepy this episode. Yeah. This morning, we got up early so we could be on uh, uh, the Country Squire radio um, it's a podcast about mm-hmm. pipes and pipe-related things. It's a pipe smokers Topic. podcast. Topics, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was fun. Um, good guys. So, yeah. Check out their podcast. They do it weekly. Somebody mentioned on Reddit, the pipe tobacco sub over there. Um, well, they didn't. They asked why we hadn't talked about Goto, um, one of the Japanese carvers, last week. And the reason we didn't do that is because we've been talking about Sixten this whole time and his influence throughout history, and he taught Toku and Fukuda. So that's those. that's why we talked about them. Uh, Toku taught Goto, so he's kind of the, uh, the grandchild. Yeah, the second generation. The second from, generation from sixteen. Yeah. So, but uh, but he is definitely a good mention. We, we mm-hmm. should have mentioned him because yeah. he's he's very good, uh, and definitely in the Japanese school. And yeah, Def- <laughs> definitely in the Japanese school. So I, we're going to talk some more about history. Sometime in the future, um, it'll come up. We've got to do some research and get our ducks in a row so we don't make fools of ourselves. Uh, so we were asked um, about the pipe that Jared was smoking a week or two ago. Yes, um, that has Buddha belly on it, and uh, it's a nice little pipe. Um, mm-hmm. It's actually quite nice. The reason we commandeered it <clears throat> is it was one of our early experiments with Buddha belly. Yeah. And it was not lined. Mm-hmm. Um, and you need to line Buddha belly because it can crack from the heat. It mm-hmm. doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily crack bad enough to affect the actual smokability of it, but it can crack and, and be the ugly, ugly just <laughs> with, um, <clears throat> from the heat. Yeah. So all subsequent Buddha belly pipes have been lined, mm-hmm. and you are safe, um, at least from our Buddha belly pipes. Mm-hmm. Can't speak for everyone else. <laughs> um, also, it was sandblasted. Right. We sandblasted the bamboo, and it didn't quite aesthetically look as nice as what what we've been doing. Yeah, it wasn't quite some. what we were hoping. Um, but it's worth a mention. Buddha belly is very difficult to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons you don't see very much of it. And when it does, it when you do see it, it's a higher price. And, you know, it's just... It's 
really a pain, um, mm -hmm. even compared to normal bamboo, which is already a pain to work with. So we were also asked um, uh, to uh, show a little bit more of some other pipes that we were working on. Um, these are a couple that we we just finished recently. Uh, this one we actually finished today. This was actually kind of a, a little fun story. One of a, a pipe collector and friend of ours um, messaged me and said, uh, mentioned a pipe that we had on smoking pipes and said, wouldn't this, wouldn't this shape be cool with a teardrop shank? Just, you know, a thought. I said, you're right. It's a great idea. So <laughs> that's where this came from basically uh, very very similar except mm -hmm. the other one was blonde and this one's this one's stained mm -hmm. and uh, but it has a teardrop shank and it's quite nice yeah, let me see that I would smoke this a lot this is just mm -hmm. the right just right for me still quite light um, okay. by the way both of these are available right now if anyone is interested but not on the website and we don't know how long they're going to be available so give us a holler if they interest you mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, this one was a fun one. It's got a really cool uh, plateau top um, and a military mount, which uh, is one of our favorite things to do, mm -hmm. uh, which we've talked about before. Um, but it was an interesting process to get this one to be the color that it is uh, because I, I used stains that we don't normally use because I wanted to experiment with a combination that we hadn't used before and it did not look good so we had to completely we had to re-sand it. it and refinish it um, so sometimes staining can take a while it's not it's not quite as simple right. as just throwing stain on there and saying it looks good it, yeah. it can actually take a long time and, and be an intricate process yeah but now it looks great mm-hmm so. Yeah, especially with that copper. I'm glad we mm -hmm. redid it. It looks a lot better. Yeah. We are going to show you a little trick that we have learned. Well, the lesson, okay. we, wanted to, we wanted to mention something. The lesson is one should not chomp <laughs> on one's stem. <laughs> that is a lesson that I fail at all the time. Mm -hmm. So we figured we'd throw a little tip for other people that are like me who just obliterate their buttons mm -hmm. um, something to help prevent it is you know you get the teeth marks uh, something that you can do to help bring that or get rid of the the teeth marks besides actually going back and, and resanding it and finishing it so basically all you need to do is take a blow dryer uh, we have an actual heat gun which is basically the same thing and then you just gently heat up the entire surface and because it's actually compressed rubber it's it's it it will in a sense bounce back and it will come back because they're indentions not so much as scratches right and so they'll actually come out and and become smooth again um, to within reason within reason i mean it, it's just to help the longevity of of the button if you're a, if you're a biter mm -hmm. um, the one thing you want to watch out for is as you heat it up it can affect the bend of the stem and so mm -hmm. you want to make sure you don't want to do that so you just want to heat up the end and make sure it's still on the right angle yeah. and um, to be fair this only works on ebonite right and not acrylic seek so. professional help yes when in doubt <laughs> anyhow uh, we will talk to you next week <coughs> and be drinking and smoking mm -hmm.